Hello everyone, my name is Miss Brooklyn and I get the opportunity to teach you guys today a math lesson. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you. Awesome, there we go. And perfect. All right, so this lesson today is called Spin to Win and it is single digit addition practice. Um, so spin to win is actually a game we're going to play, and I will get back to that a little bit later. Um, but we are going to be practicing that single digit addition. All right, so just going over kind of the agenda and objective. Um, first, we're going to go through an introduction like I just did. I told you my name is Miss Brooklyn, and we're going to go through the vocabulary that we need to know for this lesson, some materials that you might need, and we're also just going to set a goal for this time. Um, I think setting goals really helps in being successful in our work and having a good attitude, so we will be doing that as well. We're also going to be reviewing addition with single digit numbers. Um, I know that you guys, if you are in second grade or going into second grade, you've probably already seen um, some math with single digit numbers. So we are gonna just review that together. And then we are specifically going to talk about a make 10 strategy. And we're gonna go into the definition of a make 10 strategy, how to use make 10 strategy, and just make sure you guys are very comfortable with it. And then once we have gone over that, we will do, we will build a spinner and I will explain the game to you. And don't worry if you don't know what the spinner is yet. I will explain that to you and we will build that together so you guys are all set to go. And then we, I will model how do you use the spinner? What game are we playing? We can do a couple problems together and I think that'll be really great to get you guys started. And then we're going to take a quick brain break. I have something fun planned, just a minute in the middle there, um, where we're going to get a chance to just have a little bit of fun in the middle of our math. And then after our brain break, I'm going to give you guys a chance to pause the video and actually try doing the spinner game yourself. So that will be a little bit of independent practice for you. And then after that, we are just going to go through the application. Did we reach our objective for the day? Did we reach our goals? How can you use this addition in real life? And then we will say goodbye. So I am so excited to get started with you guys. And let's go ahead. All right, so the objective of the lesson today is by the end of the lesson, students will be able to creatively create and solve digit addition problems using the make 10 method. And I am going to go over what that is. So first of all, welcome to the learning lab. I hope you guys are having a great day wherever you are. And before we get to work, let's just take a deep breath. Let's set a goal. I think my goal will be to have fun and have a good attitude while learning today. And remember to have fun. Um, I think a lot of times just having fun can help us uh, be set up for success and just have a great time. So we use math every day and I think this lesson will only help you with that. So here we go. All right, so the materials you will need for this lesson are, it's a blank piece of paper. So any kind of piece of paper that you have will work, but I am just using blank printer paper. You will need a writing utensil, whether you want to use a pen, pencil, or a marker, anything is fine with me, whatever works for you. We will also be using a paper clip or a safety pin. And I am using a ruler for a straight edge. Um, if you guys don't have a ruler, anything, maybe a book or a DVD case or something that has a straight edge that you can trace would be awesome. But again, if you don't have these things, no big deal. We can work with you. Okay, so now that we have our materials 
all good to go, we are going to go over the vocabulary for this lesson. The first vocabulary word is some. Now, hopefully you guys have heard this word before, but sum is the total from the addition of two amounts. So think about when you're doing a, an addition problem. Let's say it's three plus three. What does that equal? Three plus three is six, right? Six is the total of those two amounts. Therefore, six is our sum. So that is just a great way to remember the word sum. The next vocabulary word we have is addend, a number that is added to another. So again, we can use three plus three as our example. Three is our addend because we're adding it to another number, right? Three plus three equals six. That is our addend. All right. Next, we have the make 10 strategy. I've mentioned this before, and now we're finally getting into what this is. The make 10 strategy is decomposing one of the add-ins to make 10. And I will go into more detail about that on the next slide. And a number sentence. A number sentence is a math sentence made up of addition or subtraction. You guys have seen number sentences in many places, I promise you. Um, one number sentence, for example, would just be three plus three. We can use that. Three plus three equals six. That is a number sentence. It's just math sentence made up of addition or subtraction. So these are the vocab words that you will need to know today. Hopefully you are familiar with them. And if not, this is a great time to maybe go over them if there's someone there with you or um, just reread them again because they are important to today's lesson. Okay, moving on. First, we're going to review adding single digit numbers. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen with you guys for just one moment. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I am just going to show you guys um, some problems that I have on a piece of paper. Now, if you guys are in second grade or going into second grade, you guys are probably very familiar with single digit addition sentences. So a couple addition sentences that we have that are just for review, I wrote them down on this piece of paper. First is the example that I've been using so far in this video, three plus three. So three plus three equals six. Awesome. Perfect. Next, we have two plus five. Two plus five, we know if we have five and we add two more, that is seven. Awesome. Next, we have four plus two. So if we have four of something and we add two, we know that is one, two, three, four, five, six. The answer is six. Great. Now, just by looking at this paper, I can see that on this problem, three plus three, and this addition sentence, four plus two, we get the same sum. Those are just two different ways of coming to that sum because both three plus three and four plus two equals six. So we know that we can get um, a sum in a couple of different ways usually. So the last problem we have is very simple. It is just two plus one. And two plus one is equal to three. Great. So we reviewed a little bit. We did three plus three equals six. And then we did another addition sentence with four plus two and we got the same sum in a different way. So four plus two equals six. And then we added two plus five to get seven and we added two plus one to equal three. So that is just a little bit of review on some single digit addition. And when I say single digit, I mean we are using digits that are under 10. 
because they just have one number in them. And a lot of times we use single digit addition and we think it's easy, but it's also easy to get tripped up. So it's important that we practice it as much as we can and we learn different strategies to help us with it. All right, I am going to share my screen with you once again. Here we go. Perfect. So our slideshow says review. We did that. Awesome. Adding single digit numbers. Now I am going to tell you guys about the make 10 strategy. So if we can just go back up to the vocabulary page, I just want to review what the make 10 strategy definition is. And the definition is decomposing one of the add-ins to make 10 decomposing one of the add-ins to make 10. All right, now that we know that, let's see what examples we have. So we have five plus six here. First, before we do five plus six, let's try to decompose one of these add-ins and make 10. Well, I know that five plus five equals 10, right? That's easy math. That is math that we are doing in our heads. So five plus five equals 10. And we know five plus one equals six, right? So if we do five plus five equals 10, we know all we have to do is add one to that sum and we will reach our um, correct sum. So we know once again, five plus five equals 10. And five plus one equals six. So let's do 10 plus one, that is 11. So our addition sentence is five plus six equals 11. I hope that makes sense. We will continue to do some examples together. Let's see the next example. All right, seven plus seven. Let's start to decompose one of these numbers. Of course, these are two of the same numbers, so we will be decomposing seven. So let's think. We know seven plus three equals 10, right? And we know that three plus four equals seven. So when we add seven plus three equals 10, we know we have four left over that we need to add to the number 10 in order to get our final sum. So let's go over this. We did seven plus three to get 10. We know we have four more left over. So let's do 10 plus four. 10 plus four equals a sum of 14. So we know that seven plus seven equals 14. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys and we will continue doing some examples. Okay, these are practice. I'm going to do some of them with you and then I want you to try the last few on your own. You can pause the video and take time to do that. Let's do the first few together. All right, the first problem we have is eight plus four. Eight plus four. Our addition sentence is eight plus four. Hmm. Well, we know eight plus two equals 10, right? Okay, so we added eight plus two. And we also know that, um, we also know that eight plus two equals 10, and we know that Two more is 12, right? Good. So eight plus two equals 10. That's how we get our 10. We are making 10 and we have two left over, right? So we add two more and we get 12. So that makes our addition sentence eight plus four equals 12, just like this. Awesome. Let's move on to our next one. Nine plus nine. 
And again, I'm going to stop sharing my screen with you guys for just a moment so we can do this together. And then we will go back to our PowerPoint presentation. So I have nine plus nine here on my paper. Again, we have two of the same numbers, so we know that we're going to be decomposing nine. Most of the time, it helps to decompose the smaller number, but today, since nine plus nine is the same, we know we have to decompose one of the nines. So I have nine plus nine. Well, I know that nine plus one equals 10, right? Yes, nine plus one does equal 10. And I know that if you do nine minus one, that's eight. So we have eight numbers left over that we need to add to 10. So let's start by doing nine plus one equals 10. Right there, nine plus one equals 10. And then we have 10 plus eight equals 18. So our final sum is 18. And we got that by decomposing the nine to eight and one and adding the one first to make 10 and then adding the eight to get our total sum. And that is just a really helpful way to um, get our answer very quickly. So let's continue. I'm gonna share my screen with you once again. Okay. All right, so we are back to our practice page. I am going to do one more with you guys, and then I'm gonna let you pause this video and try the last two um, just on your own and using the make 10 strategy. So the next number sentence we have is seven plus five. And again, I talked before, most of the time you want to decompose the smaller number. So in the number sentence seven plus five, I know that five is the smaller number. I also know in my head that seven plus three equals 10. And I know that we have two left over that we still need to add on. So let's first start by doing seven plus three. That gives us 10. Let's add the remaining two to that. So 10 plus two and 10 plus two is 12. So the full number sentence will give us seven plus five equals 12. And again, we did that by making 10 first and then adding on the remainder. So hopefully that made sense for you guys and I want to give you guys an opportunity to pause this video and try them on your own. All right, try those last two on your own. Good luck. Okay, hopefully you guys paused the video and tried those last two on your own. Let's just review what the answers were very quickly. We had eight plus six. Eight and six, out of those two numbers, we are gonna decompose the six. When we decompose the six, we know eight plus two equals 10. And we have four left over to add to the 10. So we know that eight plus six equals 14. Hopefully you got that right. And if you didn't, that's all right. We're gonna keep on practicing. Let's move on to the last one on this review page. Nine plus three is our number sentence. Nine plus three, let's decompose the three. We know nine plus one equals 10, right? Nine plus one equals 10. So we know we have two remaining that we need to add on to the, to the 10. So let's do 10 plus two. And the answer is the sum is 12. So the full number sentence is nine plus three equals 12. And again, it's made so easy by making 10 first and then adding on the rest. So hopefully you guys got those and had a fun time trying them. Let's move on. All right, so now we are actually going to be creating a spinner. And this will go tie into our game. And let me stop sharing my screen so I can show you how I have already made my spinner. 
Okay, I made my spinner ahead of time. And you guys can take the time now by pausing this video after I give an explanation to create your own spinner or create it alongside while I am talking. So again, I made mine beforehand and it is not perfect and that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, in the learning lab, we just try to have a fun time and do the best we can. So I made this spinner using this purple marker because I love the color purple and I also used this ruler. And even though my lines aren't perfect, this ruler just helped me get pretty straight lines and tried to get even um, little spaces for the numbers to go in. So you want to make 10 spaces on this spinner. As you can see, we start with zero and you work your way all the way to nine. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that is how you do that. So again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's okay, like on mine, the, the space for the five is a little bit bigger than the space for the four, but that is okay. Feel free to go ahead and um, do it as you can. So this is mine and I'm going to let you guys pause this and then I will, to finish up your spinner and then I will move on with how we play the game. Okay, so hopefully you guys paused it and have finished your spinner. Um, another thing that you will need that I mentioned before is either some sort of safety pin or a paper clip. Um, Right here, I actually didn't have a paper clip, but I did have a safety pin. So today I am going to use a safety pin. And if you guys have ever played the game, I'm trying to think of games that have this, maybe like Twister. I love the game of Twister. That game actually does have a spinner. So that's kind of how we'll be using this board and this safety pin. So once you've gotten your board finished and you have a safety pin or paper clip, go ahead and take either a pencil or whatever writing utensil you have, and you will use a tip. And let's see, you will be putting it in the very middle, let's see, like this, in the very middle, like that, and make sure that it's inside of the little circle on your paper clip or your um, or your safety pin and then you will give it a little flick and then wherever it stops mine stopped on the five that is the number that you will choose so that's just a little tutorial on how to use the spinner um, but before we actually start doing problems with our spinner I am going to show you guys the chart that I made. And again, this is something that doesn't have to be fancy and I will let you guys take time to pause it and make your own. So again, I made mine beforehand with this awesome purple color. And what this is, is it's just a chart and it says spin one, spin two, build and sum. So on spin one and spin two, we are spinning to find our add-ins. That was one of our vocabulary words. So we are spinning to find numbers that we will add to each other. So once we find our two add-ins, then we're going to build our number sentence. And once we have that number sentence, we can use that and use the make 10 strategy to find our sum. And it's awesome because with this make 10 strategy, we actually don't have to use a piece of paper and a pencil to figure out the math. We can use it as a mental strategy and um, we can find the sum very quickly. So I am going to hold this up and hopefully you guys can see that. And go ahead and let you guys um, get your chart ready. So um, if you want to go ahead and pause this and make one, that would be awesome. Okay, hopefully you have this chart all finished by now. That is the goal. And you are ready to spin, spin, build, and find the sum. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you one more time here. Okay, so it's just gonna pull up. Oops. Okay, 
perfect. So now we have our spinner. Oops. All right, now we have our spinner. Awesome. And I showed you an example of the chart and we are gonna go ahead and practice together. Um, and I actually am gonna stop sharing with you guys once more <laughs> and we will practice. All right, so take your pen or your pencil, your writing utensil and go ahead and take your paper clip or your safety pin and put it down on the very middle and give it a flick. Okay, so you can't really see it, but mine landed on seven. Now yours maybe didn't land on seven, but that's okay. For right now, let's actually use my numbers um, so we can all practice together. But I still do want you guys to spin just to have a little bit of fun and also just to practice spinning. But right now for the first few, let's use my numbers for our chart. So the first number I got was seven. So that's our very first add end. So under spin one, I wrote seven. Let's continue. I'm going to flick it again. Awesome. So the second number that I got was one. All right, spin two is one. So let's go ahead and build that number sentence. So let's do seven plus one equals, so here's our number sentence, seven plus one equals, and then we will write our sum right here. So this is actually an interesting first um, number sentence that we got because we can't use the make 10 strategy in this situation because it just doesn't make 10. Our sum is going to be less than 10, but I still think this is a great practice for us to get used to using our spinner. So I think we can pretty easily do the mental math of seven plus one, and that equals eight. Our sum is eight. Awesome job, guys. Okay, let's continue doing a couple more of these practice problems. Again, if you guys would like to spin along with me, you are more than welcome to. I'm gonna spin. Oh, I got six as my first spin. As you guys can see, I put six right here under spin one. Great. Let's do spin number two. Oh, awesome. I got seven for spin number two. So as you can see, I have six and seven in there. Perfect. So now let's build our number sentence. Let's start by putting the first spin, which was six plus, what was the second spin? Seven. Great. So our number sentence should look like this six plus seven equals, and we actually got lucky the second time because the number will be larger than 10, so we can use our make 10 strategy finally. So let's think about it. Seven and six, which number is the smaller number? Six, right? Yes, six. So let's decompose six. We know that seven plus three, it equals, Seven plus three equals hmm, 10, right? And we know we have three left over because three plus three equals six. We have three left over that we need to add to 10 to find our sum. So seven plus three equals 10. 10 plus three equals 13, yes. So our sum is 13. See, 13. So again, how we got that is we took seven, the larger one of our numbers that we got on the spinner, and then we decomposed six to three and three. We added the first three to seven, which gave us 10. 
And then we added the other three to 10, which gave us 13. And that I know is the correct sum to six plus seven. And you know what? Maybe you guys are starting to realize this, but I'm sure that you used make 10 a lot for mental math strategies before you even knew what it was. I know I sure did because I did not know what make 10 was. And when I learned, I was like, oh, I did that anyways. And it is so, so helpful. So moving on, we are going to do another one together. So I'm putting my marker down and I'm giving it a spin. And if again, you guys want to spin with me, go for it. Whoops. Okay. We got two. For our first spin, we got two. Perfect. And I'm going to spin another time. Okay, awesome. And we got nine. Nine. So spin one, I put two. And spin two, I put nine. So let's think. Item nine and two, which one is the smaller number? Hmm. I think it's definitely two. And luckily in this case, we can actually use the make 10 strategy because our, our sum is over 10. So we are able to use that strategy in this situation. So the smaller number is two, let's think. We know nine plus one equals 10, right? Correct. So we just have one left over to find our sum. So let's do 10 plus one. And 10 plus 1 is 11. Yes. Awesome. So, again, just a little bit of a reminder. Our first spin, we got 2. Our second spin, we got 9. We build our sentence, 2 plus 9. And then we had to think for a second. What is the smaller number? 2, right? And we know that nine plus one equals 10. So we just had one left over to add and we added one to 10 and we reached the sum of 11. And is nine plus two, is that 11? Yeah. So we know we have the correct answer. I wanna do one more with you guys. So let's go ahead and go back to our spinner. Spin, spin. Okay, so for the first spin, I got the number six. Number six. Awesome. Let's see what we get for the second spin. Oops. Perfect. We got the number eight. Okay, so again, we put the spin, the number we got in where we um, put the spin at. So first number was six. This is spin one, we put six. And the second number goes under the second spin and it's eight. So let's build our sentence together. Let's do six plus eight equals. Okay, so again, let's think of our steps. The first step, which number is smaller? Well, six is smaller than eight. So let's decompose the six. What do we know? Well, I know that eight plus two, that equals 10, right? Yes. So if eight plus two equals 10, we know that we have four remaining that we need to add to that. So let's do 10 plus four. And 10 plus four, equals 14. So our sum is 14. And again, we got that by decomposing the six. So we added eight plus two equals 10. And then we added the remaining four to 10 to get the sum of 14. So that is how we did that one. So hopefully now you guys have the hang of this a little bit and want to try it on your own. I encourage you to do at least three, four, maybe even five problems on your own or with a partner if you can, um, as many as you want. 
Uh, using the spinner is so much fun for math and can really help you when it comes to picking out new problems and trying things that might be new to you. So I am going to give you guys a chance to pause this and let's see, pause it and do a few of your own. Okay. Hopefully you guys were able to do a few of your own. And now we are going to have a quick brain break. And we are going to do a couple of fun riddles. So I always like to take a quick brain break just because I feel like it breaks up doing a lot of math work or whatever subject I'm working in and it keeps my brain nice and fresh and it keeps me from feeling tired or um, like I've done too much work in one sitting. So the first riddle I want you guys to really, really think about is this. What is always in front of you but can't be seen? What is always in front of you but can't be seen? Okay, once you've thought of that one, think of this one now. What is black, white, and blue? Hmm. Black, white, and blue. Black, white, and blue. Hopefully you guys are thinking of some good answers. What word is spelled wrong in the dictionary? What word is spelled wrong in the dictionary? What word is spelled wrong in the dictionary? Okay, I'm gonna give you guys a chance. If you wanna pause this to think, go ahead and pause it. Um, but I am going to go ahead and give you guys the answers. Here we go. So the first answer is the future. Again, what is always right in front of you but can't be seen? The future. The next one is what is black, white, and blue? A sad zebra. Hmm. What word is spelled wrong in the dictionary? Wrong. If you guys look up, if you guys look up um, wrong in the dictionary, it's spelled just like wrong. It's not incorrect, but it is spelled wrong. <laughs> I love that because I think it's such a trick question. So again, I wanna give you guys the opportunity. Go ahead and do a couple more problems. We took a little brain break so you guys could rest your brain a little bit and hopefully take a deep breath, maybe get a drink of water, but go ahead and try again and maybe do two more problems and then we'll come back together. Okay, hopefully you guys have done a couple problems together now and we are going to do a review. So first thing I want to review is what is a make 10 strategy? A make 10 strategy is a strategy where we decompose one of the numbers and we make 10 first and then add on the remainder, right? And that's what we've been doing all night. So one final example I'm going to share with you. I will go ahead and um, share my screen with you so you guys can see it. Okay, awesome. So this is just one final review. And this says five plus seven. And I actually think this might have been one that we got on our chart. So that's awesome. Let's do it together. What is the smaller number of the two, five or seven? It's five. So once you take five, let's decompose that. We know seven plus three equals 10. And we know that we have two numbers left over, right? So let's do 10 plus two. Okay, so 10 plus two equals 12. Is that the correct answer? Yes. 
So our sum, our number sentence is five plus seven and our sum is 12. Because seven plus three equals 10, we made 10 and we add two and we get 12. Awesome. Okay. And I want to review one more time just how we did the um, spinner game. So here we go. I'm gonna do another one. Okay. Here we go. The number we got is nine. Nine, so spin one is nine. Awesome. And if you guys want, you can use your own numbers this time or follow along with me, but this is just a time for us to review everything that we've learned and use it. Okay, awesome. Eight is the second number we got. So we have nine and eight. Now these numbers are very close together, but which one out of the two is smallest? We have nine and we have eight. Eight is smaller, correct. So let's decompose eight. We know nine plus one equals 10, right? So we can do 10 and then how many are left over? If we take away one from eight, we have seven left. So that means we are going to add 10 plus seven to find our sum. So our number sentence is nine plus eight just like I wrote it here, nine plus eight. We do nine plus one gives us 10, and then 10 plus seven to find our sum. 10 plus seven is 17. Very good. Okay, 17. Our sum is 17. Awesome job, guys. Hopefully, this is helping you um, become more fluent with your single digit numbers and you guys are having fun along the way. Okay, I'm going to spin again. We're gonna do two more. The first number I got is five. And the second number I got is six. I spun twice. And of course I put them in the column, five. And spin number two is six. Now out of those two numbers, which one is smaller, five or six? Five. Five is the smaller number, but they are very, very close. So let's decompose five. We know six plus four equals 10, right? So we made our 10. And how many do we have left over? One, that is correct. So all we have to do is do 10 plus one, and then we get our sum. But first, let's build our number sentence together. Five plus six. And we are decomposing our um, smaller number, which is five. So we know that five, I'm sorry, we know that six plus four equals 10 plus one equals 11. Great, and 11 is our sum. And my strategy is always to decompose the smaller number, but if you have a different way that you would like to make 10, that is completely fine. However it works best for you in your head and mentally is awesome. For example, in this one, five is our smaller number, right? Five is smaller than six. But another great way to do that would be to think, okay, five plus five equals 10, and then we have one left over, so that's 11. That is also a great way to do that, and totally fine if you wanna do it like that. So however it works best for you in your head is the best way to do it. Okay, let's keep on going. I'm gonna do one more here. Okay, so first we have nine again. Awesome, and I put that in our first spin column as usual. And our second number, wow, our second number is seven. I feel like we've spun a lot of sevens tonight. But I'm looking at our chart and it doesn't look like we have had nine and seven together, so we are good to go. 
So again, I put them in their columns and we are going to build. So nine plus seven equals, there's our number sentence. Nine plus seven, awesome. Okay, so I'm going to use my strategy of making 10 and look and think, what is the smaller number, nine or seven? Seven. So I know that nine plus one equals 10, right? It sure does. So I'm thinking nine plus one equals 10. Seven minus one is six. So I know that I need to add six to our 10 to get our final sum. So let's see, nine plus one is 10 and 10 plus six is, what's the sum? 10 plus six. 16, yes. Nine plus seven equals 16. And that is the correct answer. And again, we are just using that make 10 strategy to get there, which is super fun and just a great way to think about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the cap back on my marker and we're gonna jump right back into that slideshow. All right, I'm gonna share my screen with you guys another time. Here we go. Okay. Okay, so our objective today was by the end of the lesson, students will be able to creatively create and solve single digit addition problems using the make 10 method. So we did create and solve addition problems and we did use the make 10 method. Hopefully you guys feel like you accomplished this objective because we went over um, how to create, right? We took spin one and spin two and we turned that into a number sentence. And from there we solved it, getting our sum and we used the make 10 method. So again, however you did that, whether you picked the smallest number to decompose or maybe you picked the number you were most familiar with, hopefully you guys feel like you have a good handle on how to do and how to use the make 10 method when, um, when using single digit numbers in addition. And I hope you guys feel like you have completed that. All right. So I, at the beginning, I asked you guys to set a goal and you didn't have to write this down. You didn't have to um, really share it with anyone, but hopefully you guys set a goal in your head at the beginning. And if you did, um, think about, you know, maybe think about that goal, maybe tell the person next to you, if there's someone next to you, you can share that goal with them. What goal did you set? Well, my goal was to have fun, like I said at the beginning, um, and practice my math fluency, which just, need, which just means um, becoming, you know, a little bit better and a little bit smoother at solving math problems. And I do feel like I reached that goal because um, the Make 10 method helped me get there. It helped me reach the sum of the number sentences just a little bit smoother and easier. So I definitely feel like I did reach that. And again, if you guys set a, le a goal at the beginning of this lesson, I hope that you feel like you've reached that. And um, if you didn't set a goal at the beginning of this lesson, try just sharing something, either saying it out loud or sharing it with someone around you. What's something that you feel like, maybe if you didn't set a goal, what's something you feel like you accomplished? Because, you know, even if you didn't set a goal, you still accomplish so much by just following along in this lesson. And that is so awesome. And, you know, having fun while doing math is important because we use math in our everyday life. And I just want to, oops, 
I want to quickly stop sharing my screen one more time and just talk a little bit about. So we reviewed the Make 10 and we went over um, our goals. And just the final thing I wanted to talk about was why do we do single digit addition and how will it be important in your everyday life? And this is a great point because we actually use single digit addition every single day, whether you know it or not. Um, when you go to the grocery store, maybe if you go to the grocery store with your parents or grandma or grandpa or whoever, maybe they give you a $10 bill and you have to pick out a couple items, however many items to make 10. And this will help you in that situation because you'll know whether you can make 10 or not. And that'll help you, um, this lesson will help you get there quicker. Another example of, you know, using single digit addition is maybe you are trying to add up how many birthday treats you need for your friends uh, when you go back to school. Um, and you can use the single digit addition and hopefully the make 10 will help you get there quicker. So this make 10 is very, very helpful in fluency and just in helping you achieve your goals. Um, and yes, that is all I have for you guys today. I feel like I reached my goal. I feel awesome and I feel ready to use the make 10 method, um, the make 10 method in my math and in my everyday life. So hopefully you guys feel the same. I hope you guys have a great day and continue to use your spinner. And um, I hope you guys have an awesome day. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.